The F-117 performed a critical role in the first Gulf War, where it was the only coalition jet capable of striking targets safely within Baghdad city limits. Today, the stealth bomber is flying a very different mission from its Cold War intended mission. It's basically used on uh, to go in uh, in the first hours of the war to take out time-critical targets that might run away as soon as the war started. Iraqi power stations, military headquarters, and communication centers were all destroyed by this astonishing aircraft. It conducted more than 1,200 sorties, dropping almost 2,000 tons of precision laser-guided bombs. And unbelievably, not one plane was lost. Lieutenant Colonel Ken Tatum saw action with the F-117 in Kosovo in 1999. I remember the first night I flew into combat, and I remember thinking, gee, I hope this stuff works. And, uh, and as you fly in, fly in enemy territory and you watch the surface air missiles being launched and the AAA flying around, when you know it's not being aimed at you and you're not being targeted directly, then you know the airplane's working like it's supposed to. Our success rate is still higher than 97%. It's by far the highest of any fighter in the history of combat aviation. I know they're going to retire the F-117 in 2008, but it still looks like an aircraft out of some sci-fi movie. It is the daddy of all stealth aircraft. Its revolutionary technology has changed weapon design forever. I think the United States Air Force is well on its way to becoming an all-stealth Air Force. It's built into the F-22, the Joint Strike Fighter, the B-2 bomber. There are stealthy ships, there are stealthy helicopters. People have talked about stealthy spacecraft, and there are all kinds of stealthy things that have still not been revealed. But the F-117 started it. It's the weapon that changed things.